full disclosure, this is a shameless plug here. I've got a new book coming out next week called An Inconvenient Book, Real Solutions to the World's Biggest Problems. And today I'm going to give you a preview of chapter one called Global Warming, Storming and Conforming. I wrote this chapter basically as kryptonite for you to use against your gore-worshipping psycho friends. The next time they tell you how global warming causes all sorts of massive natural disasters, you say, really? That's interesting because I, I heard somewhere, I'm trying to remember, that deaths per year from extreme weather are down 95% since the 1920s. Sure, you'll be unhip and friendless, but at least you'll be accurate. Anyway, as I put the chapter together, the thing that struck me, the thing that was more amazing to me than the facts that I was finding was the fact that no one wanted to talk about those facts. If a scientist says that temperatures are up 0 0.01 degree, lead story around the country in every newspaper. But when somebody with decades of experience comes out and says global warming is a manufactured crisis, no one cares, and you can hear a pin drop. How do I know? Because that is exactly what happened last week when the founder of the Weather Channel wrote an article that began, and I quote, it is the greatest scam in history. I'm amazed, appalled, and highly offended by it. Global warming, it is a scam. But since that opinion doesn't fit nicely into the mouth of the media beast, hello NBC, uh, you probably didn't hear a word about it. Well, now you will. John Coleman is the founder of the Weather Channel. He was also the first weatherman ever on Good Morning America, and he is currently weatherman at KUSI News in uh, San Diego. Uh, John, your head about exploded with the NBC thing this week. Is that what <laughs> is that was the breaking point for you? Well, I had been listening to all the global warming talk for a long time and posting material about global warming on our website. But finally, uh, the crescendo of global warming myth nonsense exploded in my head and I had to write a real rant and that's the one that got noticed. I yeah, put it yeah. on our website, it was picked up by icecap.us, picked up by Drudge. First thing you knew, it was all over the newspapers, all over the radio, all over the TV sets and I had created a bit of a stir and all I was doing was telling you the truth as best I know it. Yeah. Um, why is it that um, the scientists are all in on this. I mean, so many people are in on the global warming is real and we've got to stop it right now. Glenn, you got to make a living, first of all. So you spent 10 years becoming a PhD in meteorology. You got a research job and you decide you're going to research the effect of, of human activity on global climate. And if you were to put out a research report that said not much and it doesn't seem too bad, uh, you probably wasted all your ten what was years. It, John, what was the what was the turning point for you? What? Because I know that you said that you went in to look for an honest answer. You thought maybe it's real. What was the thing that stood out? And you went, this is absolutely bogus. Well, when I looked at the hockey stick graph that was produced in Manning's original report, and it showed a steady line temperature through the millenniums and then a sudden rise global, I knew that that was incorrect. Yeah. I knew it couldn't possibly be and I started asking experts about it and I started digging into how that was produced and I found out it was bogus science. It yeah. wasn't real. The numbers had been massaged. The whole thing had been created. What bothered me was that the other scientists had accepted it. Well, why did they possibly do that? And I think the real answer to that question is that uh, they all have an agenda, an environmental and political agenda that said, let's pile on here. We're all going to make a lot of money. We're going to get research grants. We're going to get awards. We're going to become famous. And I guess that's what happened. John, are we, do you think we're at the point of no return yet? Are we at the point where no scientists will come out? You, you've said to me on my radio program today that people are afraid in your business to speak out. Um, can we turn this around or are we destined for global socialism? I think that the, the ship may have left, left the dock. But in 20 years, we'll have the last laugh. But of course, billions of dollars will have been spent. Policy will have been changed worldwide. People have been scared. We will have reacted to a myth. Uh, but nonetheless, eventually, <laughs> we will be, we'll realize that there is no global warming of significance. And uh, we'll have the last laugh. Now, there are scientists speaking out. There are hundreds of them speaking out. There are thousands who signed a petition 19,000 on a, on a petition against global warming. Uh, there are many scientists speaking out, but the mainstream press is totally ignoring them. Yeah. The mainstream press has totally climbed aboard 
and is marching along. And of course, the former vice president got himself an, an Emmy and an Oscar and uh, I believe a Nobel a, Peace Prize. I, I mean, believe come on. A Grammy as well. John, thank you very much. Thanks for your courage.